Question about that, because uh, I mentioned I was on their, their website yesterday, and as I was reading through, I, I saw the term gospel being mentioned, but never, ever explained. And as they went through all the different things that uh, they believe and are part of becoming a part of their church and all that kind of stuff, I saw everything you were talking about. But I did not ever see that, you know, Jesus died for our sins and rose again from the dead. Uh, there was no mention of him dying for our sins. There, there was nothing. It was all, you, like you said, you, you repent, and then you, are, uh, you become a disciple, yeah. and, and you're baptized, becoming aware of, yeah. you know, that baptism saves you. But they, they totally skip over anything about Jesus. I, I just I wanted to get your opinion about that. Well, there you go. Um, see, that's one of the insidious things. Um, did you have you seen any? Have you done any research on their Bible study series or what they the process they use to actually convert someone? That's what I was looking through. Um, that yeah. was the closest that I could get to a statement of faith. It was basically the, a manual on here's how, wait, how you walk somebody through this mm -hmm. process. And that's where it was just completely conspicuous to me that, like, Jesus is not anywhere in this thing. He yes. is not talked about. It, it, it's well, not a part not of them. The, not the Jesus you and I would know. Right. All right. So let's, 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 let's look at their Bible study series. I wrote a whole critique on it. Um, fundamentally, what they did was they took a, a kind of semi-benign Church of Christ study and Kit McKean added an additional study to it on discipleship, and he tweaked a couple of things to for his to kind of make his doctrine a little bit more palatable. But um, fundamentally, like in any cult, and again, this goes with the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, um, one of the key items of thought reform, brainwashing, is that the person undergoing the process does not realize what is going on with them. There is a strict set of steps and a strict kind of doors you have to pass through. Like you can't have all the doors open and see the end of the hallway because you're you're totally like, oh, there's no way I'm going to believe any of that. You guys are crazy. But if you go through it step by step, room by room, then the person being uh, under the process of thought control, thought reform, doesn't realize what's going on. So the ICOC study series, you start with something called the word study. And it seems like a very innocuous question for that study is, would you like to, you know, obey the word of God? Mm -hmm. it's, oh, yeah, offhand is like, well, sure, yeah, obey the word of God. That's what God wants us to do. But what they really mean is, do you want to obey our interpretation of the word of God? In addition to, yeah, you can try and obey the word of God, but you'll never be able to do it because you are an imperfect, flawed Sinner who can never earn their salvation, and hey, at this point you've already broken the law. You one part of the law, and you've broken the whole law, and you're already uh, separated from God. So at that point, you have um, that typically happens after that would be the their discipleship study, where Kit McKean would come in and his a specific study on discipleship, where fundamentally. It would, in all these Bible studies, you have at least two or three members studying the Bible with a non-member. And it's all the same sex, so it's like men never study with women, never, women never study with men, even though there is one exception to that. I'll cover here in a second. So their discipleship study, where they basically walk through, and this is kind of an issue of where the churches of Christ were at, and kind of where we're at today in some degrees with easy believism. Mm. where basically, you know, you, there is no sinner's prayer in the Bible. Mm -hmm. There is no, you know, you know, the scriptures clearly say, you know, believe in your heart, it's like, Jesus rose from the dead and you will be saved. But there's more to that. That's not just a call to believership, it's a call to lordship, to surrender your life. So if they would hit the lordship scriptures hard, mm -hmm. Luke 9, you must give up uh, everything in order to become my disciple. Mm -hmm. um, no one comes to see and says, Lord, Lord, and doesn't do what I say. Um, so basically, they would go on, they would hit up the worship scriptures and obedience 